So let us just, every single person here, just close our eyes for a moment. And inhale and exhale. And come in, breathing in and exhaling again, just gently. And just you feel yourself just focusing, coming inhaling and exhaling. And just keeping the eyes closed and just feel your presence here and be very accepting of yourself. Just uh, give yourself a big hug. Just accept everything inside yourself and inhaling deeply coming in and out. And open the eyes. So I'm, thank you John for that and, and thank you for inviting me here today. And I'm going to be talking to you about uh, optimism and I was asked to talk ab about my own a little bit about, about what I've done and frame my comments around that. There are two great organisations that I want to highlight. Uh, global social leaders. I mean, every single one of those three words uh, I completely admire. We are one humanity, regardless of uh, race and nationality and social origin and everything else, we are truly have more in common with each other than we could possibly begin to realise. And social uh, is marvellous because when we forget that we are truly social uh, and we are born to be social and when we retreat inside ourselves we find a tomb of loneliness and leaders, well, all you girls there. Can, hands up, year seven girls. Year eight. Uh, year nine. Um, and, okay, so that's great. So, uh, and the other organisation I want to pick out and praise is Townley, because Townley, with your great head uh, and staff, uh, is really making a, an enormous impact on the whole perception about what education is about. So I think this is, I'm sure you realise, girls, you are at a great school. And to be proud of what one belongs to is such a noble and good thing to be. Uh, and you have such reason to be proud of this school and the way that it is uh, not just educating you very well, uh, but is uh, showing other schools the way. And I want to uh, pick out two people. Uh, one is somebody you've already heard today, who when she ran the country's schools uh, as Education Secretary, uh, begun a process uh, of total transformation uh, about what education is about and, and the fact we're not just educating people for results, now that's very important and exams uh, matter enormously, but they're not all important. And if we think that all we are and all that education is for is just educating this little bit up here, the part of the brain, uh, and ignore everything else, then we are selling uh, young people short. And I don't think that anybody, uh, any politician I know has done more than uh, Nicky Morgan to make that transformation. So let's have a big round of applause again for Nicky Morgan. <laughs> and and, uh, and the, the other person is really people. I mean, it's, it's everybody uh, here. There are too many to pick out who are uh, in your organisations, uh, in GSL, in your own schools, uh, are uh, making the weather. Uh, Martin Robinson there, uh, others, so many people here who are making the weather, changing the understanding of what education can be for. So just a little bit about my, myself. I 
uh, wasn't very uh, happy uh, when I was at school. Um, and I found it frustrating because I tried really hard, but it never seemed to be good enough. And uh, I also loved doing things like uh, uh, sport, uh, but there didn't seem to be the opportunities. Um, I mean, back in those days, I, I was about six foot eight, so I mean, I'm surprised that I wasn't uh, in, in more teams. I'm, I'm, in fact, you're lucky to see me here at all. I'm, I'm shrinking at an alarming rate. Um, and, but was never picked to be in any teams. Um, I loved art and music and uh, acting, but again, um, you know, I mean, it, it, I'm sure it was because I was no good, but nevertheless, uh, I wasn't picked to be in, be in anything. And, and I felt that um, only a, a part of me had been educated by my school, despite the best efforts of uh, all the teachers in uh, my school, uh, which was also in Kent. And, and they were very dedicated people, and I'm in touch with uh, lots of them still. Um, but somehow it just didn't do the full business for me. Uh, and then when I went uh, to university, uh, I kind of went too much the other way and I, uh, I left my, I didn't do enough uh, work. Um, and, um, well, I mean, that's like embarrassing how bad that side was. And I just threw myself into the arts and into sport and into, into developing all other aspects of my uh, character. So in a way, I had a lop lopsided education, uh, all uh, academics at school, and then all the other uh, things that are important um, that should be part of what an education is, I did afterwards. And I never thought I would uh, teach. I actually thought uh, that I would um, uh, get to play for Chelsea um, uh, football. Uh, team uh, and but you know, I am an optimist and I know optimist is, is the theme and, and I just want to, you to know that I have not given up hope and, and I have my phone here and I want uh, you know you to know that, that if this phone does go there is just a chance that it could be uh, a late uh, call up. Uh, so, so optimism uh, never dies. I also was very keen on being a lead guitarist in a rock band. Um, I got further there, uh, but uh, not that far, uh, because I found it quite hard to play in tune. Or rather, put it this way, my notion of what playing in tune was, was different to the rest of the world's notion of what playing in tune was. So that kind of didn't go uh, very far either. I certainly never thought I would go into, into schools. Uh, so after my degree, I did some research and, uh, and then decided with my wife, who I'd met at uni, University on Plays, that uh, we would both go in, into schools. And our son is a teacher on a programme called Teach First at, at the moment in North London. He loves it. So it's very strong in our uh, family, uh, this idea of teaching. And I thought, OK, I'll give it a go. Uh, and I'll try it for a year or two, uh, and then I'll probably do something else like, well, I thought, you know, you know, tough, you know, Chelsea, you lost your opportunity, but Arsenal, I'm here. Um, and, and, and so I was just waiting, and, and anyway, 30 years later in schools, um, I was still waiting. But one thing I, I, that happened to me, and I went on and became uh, a head, was that uh, and in that first school I was head of, I really did uh, scrunch everything up uh, into the passing of exams. And, and I thought this was enormously important. And, but progressively, and it was partly, I have to say, this is odd, isn't it? I had my own children. It was a co-ed school. And I had our two daughters and our son at that school. And the more I talked to them and their friends and their parents about what a good education was. It made me realise that you could put both sides of my own experience together. The very uh, academic exam focused experience I had at school and then the everything else um, at university, including uh, volunteering and, uh, and helping 
uh, others um, and being involved in social projects at uni, that you could put both of them together. And that's what I started doing progressively at that school. And then after 10 years, that was called Brighton College, which is in Brighton. After uh, 10 years in that school, uh, it was time to move on for me and uh, I went to another school called Wellington uh, and there is a fantastic teacher who I work with at Wellington in uh, the audience uh, and that is Wellington, that's the picture of it there under the transformative, transformational leadership programmes and before I went, uh, before I joined, I went and addressed a room like this of prospective parents, so these were parents who were trying to decide whether to send their children to this school or to another school. And after I'd finished speaking, um, somebody asked uh, a question and they said to me, what did I most value? Uh, if I could pick out one word, uh, what did I most value uh, in, uh, if they were to send us their daughter, what would I most want her to be at the end of her time at the school under my headship? And without thinking, without thinking, I said, I would want them to be happy. And um, so, you know, that was that. I didn't think very much of it, but somebody came up to me at the end of the talk, um, the one person left in the audience, everyone had walked out uh, during it, and, and said, do you know uh, that uh, there is a whole movement um, amongst um, academics at universities called positive psychology, which is about the science of happiness uh, and well-being? And I hadn't a clue, but I think I probably said because I didn't want to look stupid. Oh, yeah, you know, of course. Um, and, uh, but I hadn't a clue. And then I rapidly found out about it and found out there's this extraordinary work that is taking place, um, which is about what we can do, particularly at school, to help our young learn how to live with themselves, learn how to realise that that we all matter and, and, and that we're valuable uh, and we have something to offer uh, everybody else and that we're not just valuable for the exam results that we might or, or might not get. Um, and this was really interesting and in that, you know, I was attacked when we uh, launched the teaching of happiness and well-being 12, 13 years ago at Wellington. And people said, this is very self-indulgent and, and this is absolute nonsense. And, and you know, it's about, uh, education should be about uh, doing your best. And absolutely, you know, and one of the interesting things is that we become happier when we do our best. We don't have to be the best, however, to be happy. And if we strive just to get a GCSE, a 10, 9, 11 A stars, if we set our hearts on that as all important, rather than simply doing the best that we can do, uh, then we will never somehow make ourselves satisfied. Now, why does all this matter? This matters very much because uh, schools are partly about preparing you for university. So how many of the girls here think that you might want to, or definitely want to, or might want to go to university at the end of year 13? Hands up. Okay, so, 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 so the vast majority and probably perhaps even all of you. So one of the things that we have to do at school is not just get you the grades that you will need at your um, exams at the end of year 13 uh, and, and your GCSEs, but also uh, to give you the skills that you will need when you go to university to learn how to live and, and to have a really rounded uh, life. Uh, and one of the things that's happening at the moment is that we are sending young people off to university with very little idea how to manage. And it is a very big transition. Those of you with older brothers and sisters will know this. I mean, it's a massive change. You leave school at the end of year 13 
and you, um, something is supposed to happen to everyone over the summer whereby, how many of you think you're going to go to a university where you're going to be living away from home? Hands up, hands up. How many of you want to go to a university away from home? Okay, so, so not everybody, but the vast majority. So less than the number you want to go to university, but certainly the vast majority of you want to go to a university away from home. You know, that's fantastic to be away from home. It's really exciting um, to do that. But it does require various skills um, that, that you have that girls can be better at than boys, like learning how to clean your own clothes. A lot of boys think that, that clothes just get cleaned on their own. This is kind of self-cleaning clothes. Um, and that food just always turns up. And, uh, and uh, the, that you, they know how to organise when to get up in the morning and when to go to bed and the things to avoid uh, drinking or, or smoking. And uh, dr illegal drugs are a massive uh, problem at university. Um, we've got, we're producing a survey next week that shows that uh, uh, nearly half students who get involved in drugs feel under social pressure to do it, while most of the students recognise that um, taking of illegal drugs can be deeply harmful. So, you know, it, it, it's a wonderful time at university, but we're all the better uh, and you'll enjoy it all the more if we do more to help prepare you by building up your character, which Nicky Morgan has written uh, about uh, extremely well uh, and did so much when she was Education Secretary to try to switch countries, the country's schools towards more of an emphasis on the building of character. So this is not an alternative to an academic education, it's a complement to it. So it's not an either or, it's a both and. And this means if we do all these things and if we become uh, more, uh, we volunteer more, we help to look after each other more, we learn that we are responsible for our own well-being and that we can do things that will either hurt our well-being or we can do things that will help our well-being that we and also we learn that we are in charge of our own lives we are only powerless or victims if we choose to be powerless and victims or if we think that we are powerless and victims and you know when we're with people like that because they'll always be blaming others um, they'll it will always be everything will always be somebody else's fault but uh, everybody, even the poorest uh, children in, in uh, uh, the slums around Rio de Janeiro or around uh, Pretoria or Cape Town in South Africa uh, or in India, uh, everybody, every child has the ability to be in charge of their own life and to make decisions. And that's what the heart of all this well-being uh, and volunteering and global leadership is all about, that we are in charge of our own lives, that we are able to make the difference to ourselves and to other people, that at the heart of that is learning to accept ourselves um, and to be loving to others as well as to ourselves. Love is the most important thing in the world. Um, in the world, uh, and true love is the opposite of exploiting uh, other people. The word is very much misused. Uh, uh, love is about uh, putting others first, and we learn. We really learn very uh, early on, if we're doing all this correctly, that to, to care for others doesn't make us less happy, it makes us more happy. Uh, that if we do good to others, we will feel good. And if we do bad to others, we will feel bad. Um, just this morning I was looking at an, a spammy email from somebody who was trying to extort money uh, on the spurious, on the grounds that somebody had lost their wallet. And I just felt, you know, we, a lot of us get these, these messages. It's, it's so sad that people are, are doing that because you will never be happy if you try uh, uh, and lie and cheat and, uh, 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 and 
take from other people. So we learn to, to give to other people, we learn that we are in charge, we learn that we can make a difference. So I think that's my concluding message that uh, global, because it's one world, um, and the oneness of the world will become increasingly apparent in your lives, um, increasingly apparent year on year, decade on decade, the fact that we uh, thrive or, or not together, uh, that it is about social, it is about reaching out to others with a spirit of inquiry uh, and love uh, uh, and compassion and leadership means the opposite of being a victim. So if ever you're saying, uh, why has somebody done all this to me or what, you know, why is my life like that? You're not being a leader. Leaders uh, have terrible things uh, happening uh, to them and yet they can still um, uh, be in charge of their own lives. And just, and this is not a p political point at all, I was just uh, saying, Earlier, I was. I woke up in the middle of last night, and, and there's so much that's in my head at the moment, uh, which is um, you know, family and work and stuff and stuff. Um, and I woke up at three in the morning, and for some reason, I suddenly started thinking of the prime minister. Um, and this is not. Uh, and I just thought, well, she has whatever might be. Uh, worrying and troubling to me is a fraction of the pressures that she is under and she also has to cope with what I don't uh, which is people uh, being uh, deeply offensive to her as a woman. I do not think uh, that she would get uh, as much uh, attack if she was a man. Some of it is uh, men on women contempt. Uh, much of it just comes because people don't like her politics or, or they want themselves to take over from her. I'm not making a point, a political point, I'm just saying that she does show and it's important to see people and recognise people on television. She does show a lot of uh, courage uh, and strength, the ability to cope under really very, very difficult, multiple pressures, and also dealing with people who have a lot of contempt for her. Uh, I think, by the way, her faith is obviously, I don't think, I mean, we know that her faith is very important to her. And I would absolutely say that if you do have a faith and can develop one, uh, if you haven't already, it will uh, underpin your life. So there we are, it's a fantastic world. Uh, year eight is definitely the very best year to be in at school, but year nine is even better. Um, and, and go and make a sensational world. And thank you very much for inviting me here today.